The 11 to 14 6 7 Power Stroke is one of my favorite trucks to drive because of that known turbo. Yes, it has problems, but it drives so freaking good under stock ish applications if you're not trying to overdrive it, basically. All right, well, after months of ownership, it's finally time to get the red single cab dialed in. I don't know why the uh, light's on. There's something going on with this exhaust here. Oh, that's... So, all right, everyone, welcome back to Top Garage. What we're gonna do today, we're finally getting around to tuning it up, making some power. Uh, we got some used wheels and tires in the back we're gonna put on here, because they're 35s. We're gonna get these tiny little ones out of here. If you can see over there, I already got started a little bit. There's the door panel off from the inside of the door because something's going on with the door handle. And then there's a torch and an air chisel laying under the truck because of further situations. So if you come with me over to the, to the driver's side of the vehicle here, you're gonna see that something's going on with the door handle, couldn't open. So for the past, I don't know, X amount of weeks, I've been climbing in through the passenger side looking like an absolute clown. As if I don't already. Go into the grocery store, come out with your groceries, go around to the passenger side, set them on the seat, open the door, climb across, flip up the center, step on the eggs. What was happening was this wasn't doing nothing. So if you look in there, that's a bare door. Whenever you pull the door handle, there's a rod that goes down and it hits the latch to open and unlock the thing. What's in my pocket? That little rod was just slipping through that plastic retainer clip that actually pinches the rod that actually uh, opens the door. Um, why would we get a new one when we can fix it ourselves? So if you put a little pressure on that gray plastic tab, it'll squeeze that rod enough for it to go down and unlock the door and open the door. So looking in there, zoom in a little bit. Oh, look at that. Wire tied it. When in doubt, wire tied. So I wrapped one at the top side and then I wrapped one right around the center of it. So now the rod is tight and we got full, full action. I'm pulling the door handle outside right now and it's going down. Watch this. Okay. Ready? Oh, bingo. Okay. Um, now we have to put... All right, so I don't, I don't even remember how this freaking was on here. Someone's calling me. Right when you're about to get started on anything, your phone always rings. So now looking at this uh, exhaust, um, how it looks to be appearing is uh, there is two hangers in the front side that are rusted clean off up in here. Holy. So there's only one hanger left hanging it and the bolts that bolts to the back of the thing, you know, are all just sheared clean straight off. I think we can start by getting this thing out of the way. See what the heck's going on with it. Got my safety squints on. Half of the hangers just gone. And the bolts are sheared. You can see they're still stuck in the flange. Um, so what I'm gonna do is what I'm thinking is I'm gonna get rid of this whole piece right here. You know, because I don't want that in there. I don't even know what that is. Is that a resonator? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, it's just, I, it's just the tip's not chrome anymore. I'm just over it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace it with this. I got to get this 5-inch in the place of that, whatever, 4-ish inch. Oh, and, and you know, you think you think a guy's just gonna leave it at an axle dump, you know, coming over and then just, nah. I mean, maybe I don't know, but we got this the tip over here, so like, you know, like we got the whole, the whole unit, the whole rig. So that connects to there, and that comes out of the rear of the vehicle right there. So 
All right, so welcome to day two on our little F-350 single cab makeover project. It has been quite an interesting journey so far. We got the door fixed, we got this thing off, and if you see here, I made a whole mess of things uh, trying to polish that tailpipe section. All right, now what you're looking at is the piece that comes out of the truck. So you got your over the axle piece and then it connects to this. This is what you see exiting the vehicle. Um, so what I did, I just took about an hour and I just polished it up in the most wing it fashion you could ever imagine. I just, I just used what we had here in the shop. Here's all my papers. So I did 80 first, then six, then eight, then a thousand on the DA. There's a lot of, a lot of marks and a lot of mark stuff on here. Just don't, don't look that good. If you would just polish it, you would see a bunch of fine lines and whatever. You can see where I sanded better than I didn't sand. So after that, I took an old polish pad that I had laying around that was just bad, and I slapped it on the polisher and polished it up with Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream, the blue stuff in the little in the little jar. I wiped it on, wiped it on, and then just went over it on speed five. I mean, it's no mere finish but it looks okay for winging it with some random stuff. It's kind of cool, I could get into polishing. I think it's satisfying whenever you see something that looks like, you know, that went from this, like you see this big seam and all the weird marks and all the lines, and you take it from that and you turn it into this with not, not much effort, and it wasn't even done properly, like, like with an old polish pad and some blue cream, dude. If you had a proper setup with like an actual buff wheel and you know some buff bars or whatever they call them, you know them bars bars of soap. I mean, you could do some serious work fairly quick. About to polish the whole exhaust. All right, so that was not the easiest thing to do solo. Um, usually I have another guy here help me. Like, I think it hit me in my ear, like, pretty bad. Um, but anyways, tail section's on. Tailpipe, se tail section, tailpipe section, the rear section. It's, it's coming out a little too far past the fender. Now, if you look down, you can kind of see it. I, I don't know if I like that. But standing behind the camera and looking at it from here, it doesn't look all that bad. But if you go back here, I don't know. I think it's sticking out too far. What do you guys think? You should comment below, but I'm not gonna see it because it's gonna either be left or it's gonna be cut. So if you look down like this, I don't know, that looks whack. It's too, sticking out way too far, dude. It's gotta be back at least. So if you're looking down like this, you can just barely see it with the rear bedside. Well, I fought through the night on getting that tip exactly where I wanted it. What's cool about these things is you can customize them where you want it. You want it hanging out of the vehicle? Go for it. You want to tuck it in a little bit? Go for it. Personally, me, I like it high and tight and in there. I don't like it sticking out. That's a little goofy. So throughout this little repair here, I managed to get every tool I had out, which usually happens. Anyways, here's what we cut off. That's every bit of six inches. All right, so probably what broke this, if you can see there's a hanger missing on there, it was just slapping around. The culprit, look at this. 
I mean, this is a hanger that's permanently attached to where that meets the other end and just gone. Guys, really quick, check this out. So what I do with these clamps, these are the nice, you know, the clamps for the exhaust. I take some fluid film, just standard, not, not black, just whatever color it is. And I hit the bolt, the bolt head and the threads coming out of the back. I'm sure that it probably heats up and runs straight off, but it seems to help these last longer because yes, these will also rust out. All right, so now that we got the tip figured out, we got the exhaust wrapped up, we got the door fixed. Uh, we're gonna slap 150 horse single file tune on here with engine and transmission tuning. Um, but look at these tires. These, 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 are, these are too small, these gotta go. I mean, we're rocking with a freaking 30 inch tire here. I had these puppies in the back. Now this truck is stock ride height, so I don't know if they're gonna fit in the front, we're gonna find that out. But look at this. Oh my goodness, they're way bigger. Uh, this is a Toyo AT2 Extreme. I actually really like these tires. I ran them a bunch in the past. This is actually still on the Platinum right now. Um, so the rears, or these ones have like great tread. Uh, the other one, there's there's two with great tread and two with not so great tread, maybe for some from some burnouts or something. Surprisingly, with how light this truck is in the rear, I'm probably gonna put the better tread on the rear and the lower tread on the front. So, we gotta swap them. All right, well, I just uh, threw on the old tires here off camera because, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out how to change your wheels. Uh, but anyways, these are a, where the heck is the size? This is a 325-65R18. Um, so overall tire height on here, we're looking about uh, 34, a little over 34 in the center. Um, but I think it looks a whole lot better uh, the hardest part about this whole little uh, makeover here for the uh, single cab was digging these out of storage. Oh my goodness, they were buried. I'd rather do the whole job over again than not have to dig these out. So I just threw the tune on. That was a simple process, just a single file, 150 horse. Uh, so that's engine and transmission to go together. Um, so looking at the truck, I mean, it, it definitely looks a lot different than running with those tiny little 30 inch whatever tires were on there before. Um, here's final look on the tip. Very happy with how that position is on there. It's, it's, it's just enough where you can see it, but it's not like sticking out looking goofy. Now it's cool, I'm gonna let it warm up before I just go hammering on it. We'll just go straight red line on the thing right now. But, oh, dude, these sound so good, five inch. Love the positioning. And it's a subtle, it's a subtle polish in there, you know? Like, you're like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's polished? Is it, is it not polished? Where's it at? Oh, it's back there. About six inches off the thing. So that thing would have been sticking out, you know, way far. I'm feeling pumped about the single cab now. We gotta get some tin on there. Look at how, look at those windows. But I'll tell you what, those bigger tires on this thing made a huge difference. So clearance on the front, um, I, I think I think we'll be fine. We'll probably catch that liner in there, but this is stock ride height, no leveling kit, nothing with a 34 inch tire. I think it'll be, I think it'll be okay. Hoping we clear this too, which we should. Stock wheel offsets usually fine, but you never know. All right, so my plans for this thing were to just make it as simple as possible. Um, all while making it more powerful and fun and just addressing the little issues that it had like the door and obviously that exhaust it was smacking around back there <laughs> so I didn't want to deal with I didn't want to deal with shift on the fly or anything like that I just want to do a single tune um, and why, why would I do a low a low tune you know you, you got to go oh, oh. you got to go go for the gusto you got to go for all of it that, this is this is my opinion. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that feel the same way. If you have the max tune on, 
control it with your foot in the gas pedal you know what i'm saying like don't go hammering it around all the time and you know just just drive it responsibly and you're not going to have an issue i've always ran all of my trucks every truck i've ever had i've always ran on the highest tune level possible meaning the highest horsepower that was available in the tune yes that is controversial but it's really not it's fairly straightforward just just make sure you're not doing four-wheel drive launches and burnouts all the time and you're not really going to have any problems so anyways first drive with the with the rig here they run so good the throttle response is like insane it's like the old 6.4 power stroke days um if you've ever had one of those you know the throttle response on a on, a, on one of those tunes was was wild you know you'd be hit, you'd hit bumps and uh you'd, you'd hit the gas but anyways what we're doing right now is we're out looking for a new new duck spot a couple duck spots checking them out um you guys any duck hunters that watch this it's a big big part of what i do outside of the channel so anyways now i did nothing under the hood with this truck it's 100 percent stock uh, so i figured you know we got to go check out a couple spots might as well drive the truck and have the first drive so anyways it, it, it runs very very good um nothing was touched under the hood full stock intake i never even uh, I unplugged anything you know i just did what you guys seen in the video slapped a tune on and here we are um next step's probably like a ccv a reroute and then a probably like a cold side because these have the plastic cold side pipes on them um everything under there though looks fine I, as, as of my age, as I get older in age, I find that I'm really just leaving stuff go until it, it starts to have an issue. Yeah, it would stink to be out far somewhere and have a cold side pipe blow or be stranded from that. But, you know, I just drive these trucks and they take the abuse. Like this, like this thing's 100% stock under the hood. Um, stock CCB, CCV box is still under there. CCB. Um little chat yeah so essentially what I, I guess you could call it just two mods stage one kits only two mods it is the uh the the tailpipe section that you've seen on there and then the uh tune 150 horse tune that i guess the max just standard non super super custom tune um so you know that might put somewhere in the ballpark of 550 wheel it all depends on the dyno you know it's hard to gauge horsepower numbers off of off of many many different dynos and dyno operators and trucks you know you could have a weak pump or so it's hard to give you like a base standard horsepower level um the best way you could control that is the same guy same dyno same temperature same weather uh same truck over and over again you know if you verified that the pump was good everything was flowing right low pressure high pressure injectors um oil was clean so there's so many little factors that play into the part of the horsepower situation so i just you know usually call these trucks about 550 wheel horsepower um about thousand ish some torque i don't know somewhere in that ballpark but honestly that's everyone gets so caught up on on horsepower numbers uh what i'm concerned with is drivability how does the truck drive like yeah it can make great power on the dyno how does it drive these trucks drive freaking incredible 11 to 14 power strikes dude are wicked driving and you know i uh especially in a single cab when you have this tiny little truck and it's light and you can just rip it around um so we're i got the easy link on sixth gear i mean it's just it's such a good driving truck we're averaging 16.2 miles to the gallon um i did a ton of back road driving on my way here where we're currently at uh we're gonna go to the lot real quick i gotta stop in there and check out a couple things there potentially might be a 24 duramax on the lot um if so we'll check that out if not you guys won't see anything about it uh five inch with an eight foot bed, I mean, even with a you know crew cab six foot bed, you're not gonna get much of a drone inside on the six seven power strokes. They don't scream at you like a Cummins does. Um, 
So I, I always just go straight for the five inch. I don't play any games with uh, four inch or mufflers or anything. You know, just, I gotta turn the heat off. Just go straight five inch and just send it. Um, so on the lot, what I see so far is a 21 LTZ Duramax white. Um, I'm only talking diesels here. There's a lot of junk down here. Oh, 24 Duramax is here. We got another Cummins and another 18 Duramax. Uh, two 16 Duramaxes, one Burgundy High Country, and then a Burgundy uh, Denali. So two Burgundy 16 LMLs and uh, fifth gen Cummins. Wow, we're stacked with diesels down here right now. Let's hop out and take a look at the truck real quick. It raised it up a ton, like an absolute boatload with these with these wheels. Like it, I'm, I feel like I'm sitting extremely higher than where it was previously with those tiny little tires. Dude, there's like, there's Duramaxes everywhere and they're expensive. Like I, I, in our area, I see 24 Duramaxes on the regular and those are 90,000 ish. You could creep up onto a hundred grand for that truck. Are you guys still buying these expensive trucks right now? I need I need to know. You guys got to comment below. Um, have you purchased a truck recently? Was it a diesel and how much was it? I'm just trying to get a feel for where the market is right now because the market is so goofy. You would think it's so down because of the way the interest is and the way the financing uh, requirements are now. It's a lot tougher to get finance for stuff. But people are buying these new expensive diesels still. Do they, are they just that specialty deal or they hold the market? I don't know. I'm just ranting. But anyways, I'm curious to know, have you guys bought a diesel uh, recently and what was it? Comment that below. I'd, I'd be real interested to know. And then um, we got to get out and check out some of these trucks here. It looks like someone's been driving the new Burgundy Denali here. Um, Longhorn 2013 Cummins got in on trade. Um I want to do something with that truck. It's super hammered. It has like 180,000, 190,000 on it. The U joints and the drive shaft are completely smoked. Like it's like you can't really even drive it. Um, beds dented in. Like it's a hammered truck. But spit a little. I have, I don't know why, I have interest in, in messing with that thing. All right, so Burgundy, real quick, we're just covering this. I don't know if you guys really care about this stuff, but Burgundy uh, Denali. Here is the Longhorn that I was just talking about. Look at the front bumper on this thing. I don't, I don't know. I, I see potential in it. Oh, dude, Longhorn interior is sick. Like the bed is dented and hammered. It's just an absolute clapped out Cummins, but I, I just I want to do something with it. Uh, this 18 LT. Z somewhere in that ballpark. Oh, it's clean. Getting some new keys on it. We got Dale over there detailing. Oh, okay, real quick. Last truck we're going to show and then we'll get back to the stage one. Sorry, I'm totally taking you guys on a weird rant here. This is 24 Denali. I think it's an ultimate package because it has the painted to, painted to match flares. Now this thing is pretty sick oh it's unlocked how do you work this oh whoa it's kind of heavy i don't know if that's power that could probably probably power probably goes up power pearl white or whatever the tri code is oh my god it is unlocked power boards Oh, it smells brand new in here. New sensors in the center. Look at that screen. Gosh darn. No, I don't think it's an ultimate because I think they have different interior. But it has the painted to match flares, which is weird. I mean, but the problem with this is these are un unmoddable currently. I'm sure that's going to get figured out soon, but you can't you can't do anything fun with these things. Oh, it smells brand new, though. 
that's nice. Whoa, look at that speaker on the door. We might come down here and, and take this thing for like a full, full review. Power boards. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a good looking truck. All right, back to the single cab. All right, I swear I was done filming down here, but I just looked in here. They're detailing a TRX in here, black. What's this? Is this your truck? Hey, hey, hey. get out of here. Come on, I gotta film it. Come on, get you, out of here. You, um... It's got a Ram bar? Whose is this? What's the deal? Yours? Nuh-uh. You played around too You're much. lying. You played around. I wanted yours. I thought you were know. taking the Hydro Blue. I like the Hydro Black. Is oh. this yours? 8,000 miles. You're lying. <laughs> it's really yours. Nah. -uh. He wants it to be. <laughs> oh, I thought it was. I, I was starting to believe you. <laughs> you were saying you little bastard. Yeah. Dude, black is. I like black. That's pretty sick. What's the deal on this thing? Uh, it's not a 23, so it's got to be a 21 or a 22. No carbon. It's clean. 8,000 miles. Roof. No spare tire carrier, but it has a Ram bar. Okay, well, black TRX coming at you, coming at you live. Jack's detailing it. All right, last last one in the video, I swear. If you guys want a black TRX, message me because this will not last last long at all. Look at that thing. They look sick in black. But don't get me wrong, I like the blue. Black is, is cool. What do you think? Awesome. Sell it? Sell it. The video kind of turned into a, a dealership tour, um, but there's a lot of cool stuff on the lot right now. For real, if you guys want that black TRX, it's a 21 with 8,000 miles, 21 or 22. I'll get like the final specs on it. And um, TRXs are going to shoot through the roof because last month of production was December, this month, December of 23, last month of production ever on the V8 TRX. So the expectedly, they're probably going to hit big uh, springtime of 24 is, is my projection um, based off of, you know, people are going to start to realize, hey, those are actually gone and we need one because they're the sickest truck probably ever made. And firm on that belief, TRX, unbelievable. Uh, but anyways, so here we are back in the single cab. Now this thing rides super rough, like compared to my TRX, my blue TRX, it's so like I, I, I toss around between daily driving this, the Cummins and also the TRX. I don't drive the TRX all that much on the regular basis just to keep the mileage, I guess, lower. Um, but the ride on this thing is firm, dude. F-350 single cab, it's like riding on a brick. But, so highway, we're getting on the highway right here. Um, I get asked a lot by guys in comments, messages, DMs, and in person, how does the drone sound on the highway with the exhaust? Now, honestly, I don't hear nothing. I don't hear no, no drone. If you're pulling something heavy and you're cruising a solid, you know, 2,500 RPM up a hill, whoa, in the engine, in the power, you're going to have exhaust noise, but minimal, minimal. That's why I always say, go straight to the five inch. Do it, do it. So this is technically a modified stage one with a five inch. Guys, if you want a stage one for your six, seven power stroke, link in description. And if you want to modify it to have a five inch, just send an email in and that will get taken care of. So, uh, there you go. But all right, I'm gonna end this video here. The single cab is done. This thing's ready to go, ready to drive. And let's go work on something else, I guess.